Not her yeah, getting mad who's like, girl oh, by. With your camera recording? Now? Yes, with my camera recording because I need to expose the type of friends you are. Seriously. So go ahead and tell everybody why you've been sleeping with Sean. What do you mean? It just kind of happened. And it I just kind of happened. Yes. I and how long this been going on? I don't know. Maybe about six months. It happened For six, six months. months. Ago. But did you did you talk to Sean? No, I didn't friend. talk to Sean. I don't need to talk to Sean. Oh, I need to talk to you, you because you, you my friend. Because it was the both of you. You've been my friend for twelve you years. Can last people, we can get your man right here. Last right people. Yes. You've been my friend for twelve years, and these okay, that's what you do. Friends, but the thing is, is that when you and your you know my family. Oh, so you took happen. advantage of the fact that that we were going through some bull. You everything we going through. Actually, everything was initiated by Sean, so you can go ahead and chill with that. Me taking advantage. No, I ain't gonna chill at all. Check it out. Y'all ever notice that these women don't know how to accept accountability, dog? They really don't. Like, how can you not just sit up here and just say, hey, listen, you got me down by right. I'm down bad. Where do we go from there? The constant trying to defend your actions when there is no defense for it is it's really disgusting, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. It's crazy. Going out to eat on Friday night goes wrong. That's what it is. Let me know. Y'all can't talk. I love the show. It's angry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got to say It's a great book. Look, wait, well, okay, I'm just gonna answer for Karen. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Hey, two things I noticed, man. First of all, when people are down bad for the most part, when they know for a fact they're in the wrong, they be awfully quiet, real quiet. Then another thing in the background, I noticed the bartender, she is the walking embodiment of, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Let me just continue doing my job. She never stopped making them damn drinks. <laughs> hey, but it's the girl I had met. You know her? Who? Huh? Let me see. Huh, look, look, 
Look, look, you know her? Nah, my boy, I don't, I don't, I don't know her. What about her? Boy, they head was scrumptious. Yeah. The cab was trash. It kind of stank, mm. too. Everybody mm -hmm. had it. But they head was scrumptious, Dilly O. She a freak elite. Man, type That's shit, crazy. type shit. That's, how you know, though? How you know she a freak elite? How you heard else me? would I know? Man, I banged up, you heard me? I hate our dick, you know, I'm about to... I'm like, ooh, I smell a fish. What? Right there, but they head was fine. You me? And then my partner got some. Oh, hell no. Hey, she look mean, but she like that, fool. She like that, fool? Yes, in real life, son. That's crazy. That's crazy, fool. Ain't that crazy, though. You feel me? I'm just saying, though. Females, boy, they, boy, they out here wicked, though. But want to be a housewife, though. Want to be a housewife, but you out here. Wait, yeah, you wait, wait, here. wait, wait, wait. You know her, son, fool? Man, I'm just speaking in general, fool. I'm speaking in, I don't know her. I'm speaking in general, fool. Damn. Well, I'm gonna say, boy. I hope you ain't trying to wife this. How you met her though? How, like, like, shit, like, shit. How y'all met? So, peep. Who's at a party? You heard me? At a party. Man, that sound about right. Yo. That sound about right. Yo. That sound about right. Yo. But peep. Sound... Our first night, like some easy crossword puzzle type shit. You first night? Man, hell yeah. Tic tac toe extra. That's crazy. Like, easy, my boy. How long ago it was? It was about last week. Type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yup, yup, yup. Last week. <laughs> Black week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, hey, boy, hey, these people coming this way, but go the way. Come on, get the way, get the way, get the way. And you said, hmm, hmm. You said, you said last week, fool. Man, yeah, last week. That shit crazy. Yeah, it was too easy. Hey, hey, bust it, K. What, what you doing there? Oh, don't be scared, oh. now. Hey, fuck with Sam, boy. At my bitch, hey, you heard me? Hey, I ain't know, know that. Up. What's up, nigga? It's sad to say that this is a skit, but man, they got dudes in real life that'll crash out behind the neighborhood hoe, man. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. One of my closest cousins, man, got killed behind the neighborhood hoe. Real talk, bro. Some tender dick dude fell in love with the little thot and he basically killed my cousin behind it, bro. It's crazy. Hey, check this out. I went on a date with this girl one time. I forget where we were going. Where was it at? Might've been in like Chicago or something like that. We went on a date. I got to the got to the spot, right? We were just sitting at the bar, waiting for our table, getting drinks, whatever. She opened up her phone. The last thing she had on her phone was Aaron Gordon's network. You know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You feel me? That's I sick. was like, yo, this is wild, yo. And yeah, man, like I always say, bro, if you got money and you're a well-known person, you got status and clout, man, how can you truly ever really trust anybody who wasn't a day one someone who wasn't shooting in the gym with you because let's be real man these people know you got money man so they know i need to play my cards right with this person until i can get what i need to get out of them bro it's okay to pay me to fuck my bitch to me this this is fine you don't come in like 10 minutes 500 dollars. you're gonna bust probably in five bring my horse back to my stable it's okay with me what i look like just sitting here freezing on a bus stop with a bit <laughs> She fired in the bus, and somebody come proposition me. Uh, excuse me, buddy. Um, do you mind? <laughs> what the fuck I look like saying, no, I love her too much. <laughs> you know, I couldn't even really picture no world where I would allow a man to smash my girl for like a little bit of money, man. You get what I'm saying? It's crazy to me. I'm just not built for it. I don't got the stomach for it, bro. I can't imagine another nigga. Me allowing him to blow my girl back out. You know he gonna blow it out for the simple fact it's a competition with us, bro. Oh, you got a nigga? I gotta show you I'm better than him. If niggas is fighting in 2023, whoever lose, somebody is going to die. Wanna know why? The embarrassment factor is way too fucking high nowadays, bro. The embarrassment factor is way too high nowadays, bro. You, you get to fighting in public, you fight in public, for your ass going on that ground, your ass going on Twitter, your ass going on Facebook, getting your ass beat on. Now all the bitches, all the hoes, all your homeboys, they laughing at you. They, boy, I just seen you get your ass whooped the other day. Boy, God damn, boy. What the hell happened to you, boy? I thought you had them hands, my boy. Niggas is not going for the embarrassment fact of getting beat up and going viral in 2023. So they finna kill you. That's why I don't fight, bruh. I'm not finna be out here fighting. I'm a grown ass man, bruh, with responsibility and bills, bruh. What I look like dying because I beat a nigga up. No cow. What I look like dying because I just beat the I just beat a nigga up, bruh. Now he came back, now he's shooting. 
you know, it's an interesting concept. You know, sure, when I was growing up, you had some crash dummies who would shoot you if you beat them up. But man, it's really, really crazy these days. Like these kids are way more emotional. They're unhinged. And it's just, it's basically rolling the dice if you get into an altercation with someone these days. So the best practice is just don't fight, man. If you see some shit going left, go right, <laughs> straight up. If you are quiet, but you keep your looks up, you keep your body on point, I want you to notice, I will not notice, I want you to pay attention to something. Watch how certain women will approach you. Watch how they will send you choosing signals. Women, I'm telling you right now, when you are attractive and you are very quiet and you carry yourself real, I'm telling you right now, most women associate quietness with so when a woman say, oh, that guy's so quiet, but he keeps to himself, he carries himself so right. He not drooling and chasing no girl and just looking at every ass he see. I'm telling you right now, for one, she's going to think that you got other women that you're seeing. And for two, she's going to think that you, you know what I'm saying? Quote, unquote, a freak. Because the thing that's attractive about being a silent man is that women perceive, this is how women perceive it. They perceive it as you not being thirsty. So when you're not being thirsty and they're th in the female psyche, they believe, like, oh, he must he must really got women you know what i'm saying he ain't paying attention to me if he ain't talking to me if he ain't doing this he must got somebody look better than me or whatever and it also gives you a level of mis mysteriousness also what it what it what it signals to women is that you won't run your fucking mouth women love to flock to these these quiet men because most guys let's say you let's say you do a threesome with a girl or you did this or that you know what most guys do they go back and they go tell every fucking body they put the damn video up they got a video they put the damn video up on social media like a woman can't even be comfortable being a fucking freak with you because you talk too much and you gossip like a fucking bitch now here's the thing, a lot to you. I'm not that type of chill nigga, dog. I like to talk to people because I look at it as a form of networking. But I do remember pretty much almost every job I worked with, there always was that type of guy. And later on, you always found out he was knocking off a lot of women. And you wouldn't know because he told you because like they said, he is a quiet type of person. And women like that. They like to know that you ain't gonna go kiss and tell, man. Man, the old diamonds, old Joe. Because I've been on them diamonds. I've been on them diamonds yeah. and not when they first came out. Yeah. Yeah, Ocho. Well, yeah. I was, I'm talking about Ocho. I'm talking about I was like, I got, I got, I got, I got to try that. I got, I got. Oh, try that. oh, Ocho, man, the first time. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm young. I'm talking about my twenties. The first time, Ocho. Oh, you were taking them thing way back then. Oh, you did it back then. No, 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 right, 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 no, 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 yeah, yes, sir. So, you yeah. know, Ocho, I get up to go to the bathroom. Yes, sir. I come back. She's uh -huh. looking up under the bed. She looking all in the closet. She walking yeah. in the hall. I she said, girl, what you doing? She say, who in the hell help you? Because ain't no way you, somebody, <laughs> you did that by yourself. I said, that was me. That was me. I said, what you doing? Ocho, she all over. In the closet, in the hallway, she said, hey, "Somebody helped you. Ain't no way nobody, no one person did hey. what you just did." Hey, man, you gotta tell you gotta you gotta tell me. Send me a prescription. I gotta, gotta hey, give you yeah. a prescription for them things. You get that liquid. They that make liquid. that liquid a little strong. That thing hit you quick. Wait, you put, yeah. You drop it on the, on the, the underneath. Underneath. Where the where, where the motel is gonna take about thirty to forty-five. Right. That liquid hit it up thing. Right away. Get right in, right in the transmission. Harder than the times of twenty nine. <laughs> what? Yeah. Y'all looking out there? That's the Great Depression. That's what happened. In the year the the Great Depression happened in twenty nine. That's how hard them thing he had. Right. Okay. Right, Ocho. Right. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm gonna try that. Nah, man, popping the blue diamonds in your 20s is diabolical. I'm not going to hold you. I'm in my mid-30s, and I don't even feel the need to take those things. So I can't even agree with you, but that shit was hella funny, man. 
Maybe you got some blood issues or something like that. Your sugar not right. But, bro, at 20, you not supposed to be having a pop, though. Even if you are trying to make an impression. I ain't gonna lie. This might be kind of messy, but have y'all seen those videos where the Hispanic men, they all go to lunch and they have a lunch off? And if somebody only got a little bit of food or the food don't look appetizing, they will literally laugh at them in their face. Couldn't be one of those wives. Because the way I would be at home making tamales from scratch, marinating pork belly overnight, and salsa fresh every morning, this would never get in the chance to laugh in my man's face. I'm that kind of competitive. So, of course, I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. So, I went and checked it out and I found this video, guys. It was hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. Lunch off. <laughs> what do we got, boys and girls? What do we got? Oh, Cajun steak with a touch of parsley. Ooh, we got the paprika. Let's go. Uh, I got the birria with the beans and rice. And don't forget this. Let's see what mama cooked up. The rotini lemon zest pasta yeah, with the zucchini topped with some chicken. Ooh, got some chicken wings oh. with some pasta. Man, those wings look like they're on crack. Oh, <laughs> straight up the stir gas sweat noodles. Oh, Papa. What we got? Oh, oh shit. Ooh. We got a little homemade meatballs with some bow tie pasta. Bow tie, nice and clean, Papa. Look at that. Hey, it looks like your left nut, Papa. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're all fucking wet. Bro, could you imagine us? Black dudes at the job doing this, bro, man. Oh, you got the collard greens, little brother. Okay, you got the smothered cabbage. Oh, you got the turkey next. Oh, yeah. Okay, for sure. You got the... Yeah. Man, what the hell is that? Boy, we are juice bad. <laughs> it ain't where your son that I told you when you come to my house, pick up your son. Don't bring no female. We done told you about this, bro. Don't exactly. be bringing everybody you to our house. Right. You don't want everybody oh, around your son, though. Okay, my, but it do. do you, because every time Listen, I tell you, where my son at? your son is in the house in the because house. you got a female, and I don't want no new females, no strangers, period, around my no son. No strangers, period. Yeah. Or oh, this just got to do with a female. You heard what First I said. First of all, you know I don't got no car. Second, I'm trying to spend more time with him, and I'm trying to get him some shoes for school. What you talking about? You First told of me all, to pick you him know up and I do don't care. This, this, and Second, and then no now you got about my son. Look, I ain't gonna sit up here and be delusional, dog. If the shoe was on the other foot, man, she was bringing around a random ass nigga around your daughter, bro. You'll be upset. Let's be real, especially if y'all ain't been to y'all ain't been broken up that long and shit, man. Why you got a nigga around my son? Nah, bro, you should care who is around your kids. But let's be real, sometimes it be girlfriends that you know this man been with for a while and they still pulling this stunt. Nah, if you ain't never seen that girl a day in your life, maybe, maybe. But every time, nah. Stop trying to do it to me. Go ask one of them other bitches for some coochie because I don't got none right now. I don't have no coochie right now. Leave me alone. Well, do you know when it's going to be available? Can I talk to a manager or somebody? Come on, that's what the niggas going to say. <laughs> Let me tell y'all what's on my bucket list and what I can't wait to do. Buy my man a truck. When I say I can't wait to buy my man a truck, I'm talking about a little souped up, little fancy little thing. I'm talking about however he like it. I be seeing him running around with the lights at the front and they be sitting up. I'm going to buy my love. I'm going to get it. Oh, I can't wait to see him how about that thigh. I can't wait to see him pulling some of that thigh. I can't wait to see him doing some work in that thigh. Oh! As you should, man. Buy that man a truck. He deserve it, bro. It's going to pay back dividends, too, man. See, when you do stuff like that, bro, that really let a brother know y'all got his back. And at the end of the day, he don't need you to buy it for him. But the fact that you want to says and speaks volumes. So I can get up early in the morning, have a little father, daughter breakfast. That's Done to me, bro. For real. I remember I was a jit, bro. I used to always have them father, daddy, shit, you feel me? Nigga never. My daddy could never be there, you feel me? Could never be there. So, being up for my little girl, bro. Good little pancakes and sausage, bro. That's all it took. Little pancakes and sausage. And seeing a smile on her face, dog. Just tell everybody, I go my daddy, I go my daddy, I go my daddy. Proud to say that on my daddy. You feel me? Proud, walking around telling everybody, it's my daddy, it's my daddy right here, this is my daddy. 
I'm glad to see this brother is not continuing the trend that his father did and he decided to be a part of his daughter's life because guess what? Speaking from personal experience, dads with don donuts with dads and stuff like that, bro. Them kids be ready to matter of fact, forget that one. For Thanksgiving this year, bro, I bought a uh, pan of chicken to my daughter class, man, fried chicken wings and everything like that. So I was just gonna drop it off. But then my daughter came out the class like, come here, daddy. When I tell you that girl introduced me like six different people, and my daughter's in the seventh grade, so she's a preteen. Come on, man. I must be doing something right. She was bragging about me, man. Real talk. Well, look, that was today's segment of Positive Vibes, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to get y'all on the next one.